Hello, my name is Josh Beck, and in this video, we'll be working with Oracle VirtualBox. The goal of this video is to utilize VirtualBox to create a new virtual machine. In this case, we're going to be creating a Linux virtual machine. The first step is to install VirtualBox. Now, there may be some additional settings that have to be configured within your computer's BIOS. Uh, that allow for virtualization. So if you get some strange errors and it looks like as we're moving through this your computer isn't supporting the virtualization or it's throwing an error that it's not allowed, uh, you should look up your computer model and how to enable virtualization in the BIOS. That's a common problem that comes up the first time someone uses a program like this virtual box. So we're going to start with, uh, we should have the program open at this point. And the first thing to consider when using VirtualBox is if you look at your PC, you've got hard drives with hard drive space. You can see I've got several hard drives plugged into this computer. I've got the C drive, the F drive, and the E drive. The E drive has 391 gigabytes free. The F drive only has 52 gigabytes free. Now virtual machines can take up 30 gigabytes before you know it. Generally speaking, sometimes they take up no space at all if you're just running from what's called a live CD. So they can be very small and they can be very large. In this case, the virtual machine we're going to create is going to be very small. So you don't really have to consider having a hard drive that has 15 or 20 gigabytes free. We won't hardly be using any disk space at all for this one. We'll be using less than one gigabyte, I would imagine. But in this case, I'm going to put my virtual machines on the E drive because that's where I have the most space. And I've created a folder on E here that is called Lesson VMs. And we can see that I just have a folder in there called New Group, which I'm going to go ahead and delete. So this will be the folder that I'll be saving my virtual machine in. And as you create virtual machines, sort of understanding where the files are that make that virtual machine work can become very important later on. So here I am with VirtualBox uh, open. The first step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look up uh, a Linux distribution. We're going to download an ISO file um, that is going to allow us to sort of boot an operating system within this virtual environment. So I'm going to look up download. And one of my favorites is uh, Linux Mint. It is a variation of the Ubuntu operating system. So I'm going to choose download Linux Mint. Depending on when you're watching this video, you'll get different Google search choices here. But uh, the Linux Mint page is generally green, and we can see right now the most current version is 19.3. We have several different versions here. Uh, we have Cinnamon, we have Mate, we have XFCE. If you're on an older computer, the XFCE version is uh, lightweight and it'll work. I'm actually probably going to choose that here for this lesson. Uh, Mate and Cinnamon just feature different desktops. Uh, they're very similar. They offer the same functionality. We have a choice between 32-bit. We have a choice between 64-bit. This relates to your CPU architecture. Uh, I am creating this video in 2020. The majority of computers on the market right now are running 64-bit architecture. So that 32-bit option is one you might want to try if 64-bit doesn't work and you feel like you've done a lot of troubleshooting. But uh, generally speaking, we want to start with 64-bit here in 2020 and uh, work backwards if it doesn't work. So I'm going to choose XFCE because that's lightweight. I'm going to choose 64-bit. It's going to take me to a download page. And this download page has a series of mirrors. Um, they all host the same Linux Mint file. You can get it from all kinds of mirrors all over the world. There's also a torrent available if you want to download it over peer-to-peer. -peer. Strong case for the BitTorrent protocol uh, is the distribution of Linux operating systems. 
because they are large and the BitTorrent does allow you to, uh, the protocol there does allow you to download those quickly. I'm going to choose uh, any one of these. I'll go with advancedhosters.com and we'll see what happens. And it's going to offer me uh, a disk image file. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in a different folder. Now I'm going to find my E drive here and I'm going to go lesson VMs here and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder ISO files. I find for organizational purposes, putting ISO files into a separate folder just for these downloadable disk images is a smart thing to do because then you know where all of your ISO files are. These are virtual CD-ROMs. I'm going to choose uh, create a new folder and I'll call this virtual machine folder. And our virtual machine is going to live in the virtual machine folder, but this downloadable CD-ROM is going to live in our ISO files folder. Linux Mint 19.3, I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the video while this downloads. So I've downloaded my Linux Mint ISO file. It says disk image file, but I'd like to point out that these files these operating systems that you can download for free that work in VirtualBox always have a .iso extension for the most part if it's a portable CD-ROM that you're downloading. But we don't see .iso here. So in Windows, if you're using Windows, hopefully you are at this point, if I in the search bar type in folder options down there, folder options, here's our file explorer options. So open that up. We're gonna make a configuration to this is your host operating system here. So we're gonna make a configuration to the host operating system. Under view, we can see hide extensions for known file types is checked. Well, let's uncheck that box, hide extensions for known file types. And click apply. We can see that the in the file manager here, it now shows us Linux Mint.iso. I find that for general use on a Windows machine, having that box unchecked so that I can see what the file extensions are is very helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and round out this video. If you have downloaded your Linux Mint ISO file and you know where it is, it is time to move on to part two in the series where we'll set up the virtual machine and actually boot this live image.